This morning's uh, reading is from Ecclesiastics 3, chapters 1 through 8, A Time for Change. For everything there is a season, a time for every activity under heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to harvest, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to tear down, a time to build up, a time to cry, a time to laugh, a time to grieve, a time to dance, a time to scatter stones, a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to turn away, a time to search, a time to quit searching, a time to keep, a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to quit, be quiet and a time to speak, a time to love, a time to hate, a time for war, a time for peace. Okay, um, I did my sermon on change. Denise had asked me to do a sermon for her in, on Labor Day weekend at DuBose, and this is actually the uh, verses and the uh, sermon that I chose to do. When I was searching the internet to decide what scripture to use for today, and the subject of my sermon, I found Ecclesiastics 3, 1 through 8, is the most used scripture to talk about change. We all have change in our lives. Some people handle changes better than others. Some changes are easier to handle than others. Understanding that nothing changes if nothing changes. Someone once said, change is inevitable, misery is optional. Some people imagine that it is possible to live life without change, but we can no more live life without change and not have change than we can jump without feeling the impact of gravity. Therefore, to live, live is to experience change, and any thought that we can avoid change is, in life is pure illusion. Women have rights because, like men because something changed. People no longer die in epidemic numbers from polio, influenza, smallpox, because something changed. Albert Einstein said the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. We have to understand here today that nothing is going to change in our lives unless something changes in our lives. Woodrow Wilson gave a wise warning. If you want to make enemies, Try to change something. Change is very threatening. Why? Because change will bring with it a level on the, of uncertainty. Because of that uncertainty, people develop and add to our spirit of fear. When I think about my life and look back over all the changes through my life, the big changes, the biggest change was four years ago when I retired. I no longer have to get up at 2 a.m. to be to work by 5. I can stay up later and sleep till 5 or 6 when the dog has to go out. I will say I love retirement and I am not bored or have a desire to find another job. Retirement is a change I handled very well. A change I did not handle well was the first three years I was married. We rented a condo. I found very quickly I did not live like living in a condo and could not wait to buy a house with some property. So when we bought our house, which only has a half an acre, which is much less than I was used to growing up, for me it was much better than living in a condo. There have been many other changes in my life. My hair has gone from dark brunette to the gray that you see today. God made this change for me. What has not changed is I was raised as a Methodist, going to Sunday school every Sunday, for which I have 15 years worth of perfect attendance pins. I was away from church for a few years. Other things got in the way. After my husband passed away 21 years ago, I know I needed the strength that only God could give me. As part of my grieving process, I attended groups that dealt with grief. Someone told me that they had seen an ad for a grief share group that was taking place at Jackson UMC. I went and attended the grief share group, and yes, God had not changed. He was there for me 
a year later, I transferred my membership to Jackson UMC from Emily's Hill. Sadly, after 230 years, Emily's Hills closed at the end of May of this year. I have had many more changes in my life, both big and small. I have lived through many seasons. However, God does not change. I imagine that we would be like if God changed us on us. If one day he were nice and another day he was mean. Or what if he altered between merciful and judgmental? Or one day he decided to answer a curse and the next day he did not. I thank God that he is unchangeable. That means that you can count on him to always be there and to do the right thing. He won't change his mind about you. God has sent everything for its time, so enjoy yourself. I know that, that there, are, there is nothing better for them than to rejoice and to do good in one's lifetime. Moreover, that every man who eats and drinks sees good in all his labor as a gift of God. You should make the best of each and every, of each event, of each season of change. You should enjoy your life. It's okay to have fun as a Christian. Enjoy your children if you have them. Enjoy your car, your home, your health, and enjoy the fact you have a good church here that has done well and worshiped God. Enjoy going fishing, shopping at the mall, washing dishes, coming to church, etc. God has made everything beautiful in his time. Even the painful things are set in place by God. Everything has its purpose, even the cold weather storms that bring rain. You must wait with patience for the full revelation of God's mystery prevalence. All you can see is the middle of God's work, not its end. He knows the beginning from the end, and he has, has you where he wants you. But also set aside a place in your heart where you trust God to provide all of your needs because he loves you so much. So I will leave you with this top 10 things you won't have to worry about in the coming years. The Bible will still have the answers. Prayer will still work. The Holy Spirit will still move. God will still inhabit praise. There will still be anointing preaching. There will still be singing of praise. God will still pour out his blessings on his people. There will still be room at the cross for his children. Jesus loves you. Jesus still saves.